I'm Tamiko Thiel. I'm now working as a media artist and uh, am based out of Munich, Germany, with a sort of a second US base in Seattle where I grew up. But um, 30 years ago, my very first artwork came out the Connection Machine CM1 massively parallel supercomputer. And I consider that my last work as in my first profession of product design and my first work in my current profession of media artist. So, well, okay. Um, how has being a Japanese German American impact the design of the connection machine? That might be... Um, okay, say, say, back, say back the question. It has to live... You can how, delete the question a little bit. Right. So, how does me being a Japanese, half Japanese, half German, 100% uh, American woman affect the <laughs> design of the connection machine? Very good question. I have to say it's definitely through the German-American side of the family uh, did have an effect because my father was a, a Philip Thiel was a architect and urban planner who came to architecture at MIT actually through the graces of Jury Kepisch who founded the Center for Advanced Visual Studies at MIT Dad's first profession was a as a naval architect, a, a, a ship designer, and he was getting apparently tired of being in the military industrial complex. But when he came in 1950 to MIT, he was a, a lecturer in naval architecture, and his office was right next to Jury Kepisch, and got to be friends with Jury, and as Jury always said, and then I seduced your father, and Dad became a special student of Jury's and graduated two years later with a special degree in architecture and urban planning at MIT, so he's maybe one of the only people who came as a lecturer and left as a bachelor's, with a bachelor's degree. So uh, through, through Jury and, and through the MIT circle of the times, Dad got to know um, the the sort of uh, Bauhaus America crowd because Jury was sort of on on the outer outer skirts of, of, of this crowd so he he knew Walter Brofius he actually dad actually worked for Marcel, Marcel Breuer as a as a young architect and definitely imbibed this Bauhaus aesthetic of forms follow follows function about the machine as a as a wondrous thing that can really help humanity and and be an inspirational part of humanity, but it should also be something that is well designed. It should be designed uh, for the benefit of, of humanity. It should be designed su such that it works well with human beings and human beings can work well with it. So that's really an aesthetic that I grew up with. And then my mother's side of the family is Japanese American. She's an artist herself, and certainly the the Japanese uh, re, um, reduced aesthetic, the 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 very fine uh, reduced aesthetic of, of of Japanese design and art is something also that I grew up with. So I think those things certainly played into what the machine came to be that it had to it had to be expressive it it had to uh, communicate our idea of what the machine was about and how we hoped humanity would use the machine and how we hoped that the machine would help humanity but it also had to be uh, an exquisite object of wonder potentially also an object of desire for the people coming in saying, shall we buy this machine or not? It had to really provoke wonder and awe to a sense not only of beauty but also of, of function in the people who used it and were looking into acquiring it for their users. Fantastic. 
I'm going to do this. Just I, I, I've never done an interview. Or I, I've been interviewed. Uh -huh. but I haven't conducted it. Yeah. Do that again in a minute. Just take the best parts of that and take, you know, uh, let me see if I can, uh, let me ask you again, how old were you when you were, how old were you when, when you uh, were asked to, to, uh, to join the team? Let's see, in 1983 is when Danny invited me to join the team. I was born in 57, so uh, do, the, do, do the math, or 25, 26. Okay, here we go. So what does it mean to be a Jap German Japanese American woman who's 25 years old and asked to design a supercomputer like no other? Well, you know, I grew up reading science fiction, so I had imbibed this whole uh, concept of, of machines as, as objects of wonder and uh, something that we could really use as human beings to become more than what our, our bodies gave us. And then I was imbibing also my, my German-American Bauhausian father's aesthetic of form follows function, of machine function being something wondrous and beautiful, and my Japanese-American uh, mother's aesthetic of the very fine, the very reduced, the, the very magical also aesthetic of I would say Japanese uh, high-level crafts, crafts at, an, at a level that reaches art. So here I was, this 25-year-old kid with a bunch of other 25-year-old kids who were going to build uh, a machine like no other machine you've ever seen, a machine that could be proud of us, as Danny always liked to say. And it was, it was for us, I think, a science fiction dream come true. Nice. That's strong. Sound like um, what, did, what did it mean to be a woman in this, this tech tradition that was certainly dominated by men? Did you bring some of the what it meant to be a woman to the design and, and, uh, of this machine? I find that personally hard to answer because as a undergraduate, from the time I was an undergraduate on, I was in a a uh, very male atmosphere, but I was, a, uh, I was a very technical woman. I have to say that I could also um, cuss and swear with the best of them, and so I don't think I was very intimidated by men <laughs> in ways that some women uh, say that the male tech atmosphere uh, um, intimidates them. Uh, I was able to certainly dole out uh, very often more than the men could dole at me. So, so in some sense, I was I was one of the boys, but also uh, very feminine, very female, very proud of being female. And um, I think it was my uh, growing up with this background of both technical and design and art that allowed me to really bring this, uh, this visual expression of the machine uh, to the actual physical building of, of the machine. And the fact that I felt very comfortable with all of the guys, I mean the MIT AI crowd was my social circle in uh, MIT. Uh, they had the best parties. So. <laughs> So these were all friends of mine. Danny was an old friend of mine. That that undoubtedly also also helped because I was not working with some sort of weird geniuses. I was working with uh, with people who were my friends and and you know the way Danny got me to come and work for Thinking Machines was say you know if you come and work for us you get to work with Richard Feynman and I went oh my God where do I sign because. I started out as a physics major back as an undergraduate and of course Richard Feynman was my hero of all times and the idea that I could work with him and the fact that he ended up uh, sort of where we intersected on the machine was this 12-dimensional Boolean hypercube network that was the internal network connecting all the processors together that to me was the highest dream I could have dreamed as a as a 25 year old geeky somehow you know tech woman 
that designer. That was the culmination. <laughs>